Everybody starts somewhere, and famous actors are no exception. While some exploded onto the big screen as fully formed stars, others had some less than stellar debuts. Here are 10 actors' surprising first performances. Starting us off at number 10, George Clooney. Before he decided to be an actor, and even before he graduated high school, Clooney found his way onto the set of a TV miniseries called Centennial, where he was an extra. And this was no great cameo. That's him, right there. Carrying the barrel right there is George Clooney. Pretty underwhelming. In fact, while he seems like a massive star today, and you could certainly imagine him being born famous, gray-haired, and smirking, he toiled in relative obscurity until his mid-30s, when he broke out on ER. One and two and three and four and five and eight. Oh, yeah. At number nine, Elijah Wood. At age eight, Wood's got the youngest debut on this list. He first appeared briefly in the David Fincher directed Paula Abdul music video for Every Your Girl. After that, he had a small role as Video Game Boy in Back to the Future 2. That's like a baby's toy. <sighs> In fact, Elijah Wood was a very successful child star who's been fortunate enough to turn it into a career as an adult. Roger Ebert famously dubbed him the most talented actor in his age group when Elijah was just 12 years old. And although he might not be receiving similar praise today, he's still got a very long resume to show for it. Do you believe in the Pokemon? No. Number 8, Johnny Depp. Before he was Jack Sparrow, Johnny Depp first graced the screen in Nightmare on Elm Street, the classic horror movie of Freddy Krueger and Haunted Dreams. In it, a teenage Depp famously bared some midriff before being killed and turned into a fountain of blood. He's had a long career since then, with much credit owed to 21 Jump Street, which launched him into celebrity, and he's come a long way since Elm Street. Just be practical, Anthony. When we do a job, we do it to the best of our abilities, right? We're trying to do it like professionals. Number seven, Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson's film career is tied very closely to his frequent collaborator Wes Anderson's. They were classmates together at UT Austin where they co-wrote Bottle Rock, a charming short film about two brothers who aspire to be thieves. And it was the same short that gave Owen and his brother Luke their first role. And it was the same feature that was remade from the short film that helped Owen Wilson really break out as a movie star. The two have continued to work together, having forged successful careers from their shared roots. And today, Anderson is known as the idiosyncratic director of the Royal Tenenbaums and Moonrise Kingdom, and Wilson as the goofy romantic of Wedding Crashers and Midnight in Paris. You know what the best part of my day is? For about 10 seconds from when I pull up to the curb and when I get to your door. Because I think maybe I'll get up there and I'll knock on the door and you won't be there. Coming in at number six, Ben Affleck. If you ask most people about Ben Affleck's first role, they'll probably jump at the opportunity to tell you he wrote his way into Hollywood with Matt Damon in Good Will Hunting. Unfortunately, they would be very, very wrong. Ben Affleck's career started about 13 years earlier when he was 12 on a PBS educational show called Voyage of the Mimi. I'm Ben Affleck, and I'm in the Arctic Test Chamber for the United States Army Research Institute of Environmental Medicine in Natick, Massachusetts. In fact, after that, he appeared in School Ties, Dazed and Confused, Glory Days, Mall Rats, Going All the Way, and Chasing Amy, all before Goodwill Hunting. It's a pretty similar story for his childhood friend Damon as well. So much for the myth of two Boston kids who broke their way into Hollywood with a killer script. Say, have you got a dime? How far? I want to call my roommate and have him vacate the premises. At number five, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is one of the highest grossing actors in the world, and he's come an incredibly long way from where he started. In 1980, Tom Hanks premiered in a small supporting role in He Knows You're Alone, a low-budget slasher movie. Hanks played Elliot, a chatty psychology major who spends very little time on screen. In fact, the rumor is that he was supposed to die a typical slasher death, but he was so well-liked on set that they decided to scrap it which figures since Tom Hanks seems like about the nicest guy you can meet. But after He Knows, it took eight years of mixed success before Hanks finally broke out with Big. But it was all momentum from then on, and nowadays he's one of the most recognizable faces on screen. All right, all right, all right. Oh, How you doing? Number four, Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey's come a very, very long way. He's earned a lot of street cred with his latest renaissance, making him jump from shirtless rom-com stud to show-stealing indie weirdo. But way back in 1993, before all that, audiences got a brief taste of things to come. After a few tiny cameos in TV's Unsolved Mysteries, McConaughey had his film debut in Dazed and Confused as Wooderson, a local burnout who can't quite grow out of high school. 
In light of his recent roles, you can look back and see that he's always had some serious talent. He sports the same casual authenticity, a charming comfort with his weirdness, that he would go on to lose and eventually regain. Okay. Counting down to number three, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Jean-Claude Van Damme, aka the Muscles from Brussels, was a pretty big deal as a kick-ass action star in the 80s and early 90s. He belongs in the same conversation as Chuck Norris. But his first role was in a bizarre 48-minute movie about an American jewel thief in Monaco called Monaco Forever. The role? Gay Karate Man. It actually says that in the credits. It only took four more years for Van Damme to show the world that he was more than just a nameless karate man with Bloodsport, which is pretty much the epitome of everything that's awesome about martial arts movies in the 80s. This is a song called The History of Tenacious D, and it's not just a list of things that we've done in the past, but it's also a chronicling of our rise to power! The runner-up at number two, Jack Black. Jack Black's made a hell of a career out of being a lovable jester with a tendency to break out into song. But before he had a career, he debuted as this kid. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. After his brief cameo, it was a lot of nothing for Black, some bit parts and background roles like this one from Demolition Man. He gradually pushed his way into bigger and bigger roles until High Fidelity 18 whole years later. As for Tenacious D, Jack Black's comedy band that seriously rocks, they got their start back before their movie, their album, and their HBO comedy series on Biodome as a goofy hippie band that graces the screen for about three seconds. Okay, brothers and sisters and misses and misters, here's your daddy-o with the sounds to go. And finally, at number one, Morgan Freeman. We're cheating a little bit here, but this one's too good not to mention. After a few small parts, Morgan Freeman showed up on screen not as the voice of God, but as the voice of Easy Reader on the children's educational show, The Electric Company. Yes, the man most known for his omnipotent voice was originally known for sounding out vowels. It wasn't until Driving Miss Daisy, Glory, and ultimately Shawshank Redemption that Freeman cemented his place in the American film canon. But before that, he was the gold chain wearing, song singing, suave teacher of children PBS star that you see here. Which is why we think he had the number one debut performance of any actor out there today. So what do you think? Are there any first performances that we left out? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe to Cinefix for more IndieWire movie lists.